The Tarask. You and your fellow adventurers are haggling on the prices of some provisions in a small town, when suddenly you feel the ground tremble beneath your feet. The bustling noise of the market square dies down as the hair on your arms rises in tension. The ground trembles again, this time harder, and although your first thought is some sort of earthquake, you then see it in the distance. The blood drains from your face as you spy a towering creature of pure destruction, a creature ancient beyond measure that knows nothing but death and carnage. The silence of the market holds for a moment before being broken by a scream. This village is not long for the world. This is a Tarask, easily one of the most legendary monsters to ever grace Dungeons & Dragons, a creature to be feared by players both in-game and out. The Tarask has gone through several iterations throughout the years that alter its fearsome capabilities, but it's always one of the most difficult monsters a group could possibly encounter. Let's take a closer look at them. Tarasks were first introduced in the second Monster Manual for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, 1st edition, in 1983, at least partially inspired by the creature of French myth. As presented, they were certainly one of, if not the most powerful monsters in the game, and the description isn't shy about discussing how terrifying they are. It leaves nothing but barren land in its wake, can easily slaughter adventurers, are incredibly difficult to harm, let alone kill, and even the mere sight of one causes most creatures to flee in a panic or become frozen with fear. The Tarask would again feature in the second monstrous compendium for 2nd edition AD&D, continuing its reign of superiority amongst monsters. 3rd edition would make the Tarask even more fearsome, bringing its average HP to over 800 and providing it with numerous immunities and rapid regeneration. 3.5 edition would keep the Tarask pretty similar, but 4th edition made it even more horrifying, bringing its total health to over 1400 and making it practically impossible to kill, only allowing adventurers to force it to return to slumber. 5th edition would bring it back in line with earlier editions, although perhaps making it a bit too weak in some people's opinions, possessing nearly 700 health and with no special requirements to kill one. In addition to the Tarask's official entries in monster manuals, there was also an article written about them in Dragon Magazine number 359, titled The Ecology of the Tarask, which I'll be drawing some info from. Let's start with a description then. A Tarask typically measures 50 feet tall when standing, and a total length of 70 feet from nose to tail. A Tarask can move on all fours if running but its long arms also allow it to walk like an ape. Their backs are covered in an extremely thick, durable, and reflective armored carapace that's all but invincible to most forms of attack, magical or otherwise. Numerous spikes run along their body, and their head is crowned with two massive horns. The Tarask can smash, destroy, and devour using its horns, its claws, its vicious teeth, and its gigantic tail, making no avenue of approach very safe. A Tarask is capable of consuming and digesting practically anything, whether animal or plant, living or dead, large or small, poisonous or otherwise. It possesses an expanding gullet and three massive stomachs, with very little capable of surviving the passage through them, even magical artifacts. The first stomach consists of a number of internal spines and tumbling stones that slice and pulverize any large objects consumed into smaller pieces, even boulders, trees, or structures. Once minimized, the pieces move onto the second stomach, a churning cauldron of corrosive acid that breaks down and melts practically everything. It also has a unique feature of stripping away any magical properties on objects that the Tarask has consumed. The third stomach is actually a long, winding tube of great heat that melts anything that survived the previous two, typically only the strongest and rarest of metals. This entire process takes only a few moments, and the Tarask retains a tremendous amount of energy from everything it eats, which is good, 
because not only does it expend a good deal of energy while rampaging, it is mostly consuming for the purpose of going back into hibernation. This is the typical cycle of a Tarrasque, a creature that knows only carnage and destruction, consuming everything that it can so that it can hibernate until things regrow and rebuild, at which point it can repeat the cycle. When it has consumed its fill and is ready to sleep for a few decades, the Tarrasque will burrow into the ground, through stone and dirt. This process is somehow not disruptive to the earth itself, leaving no hole or tunnel behind it. The Tarrasque will seek out a large subterranean cavern that it wouldn't have been able to access otherwise, and proceed to hibernate. If it can't find one suitable, it will instead remain buried underground in a suspended state that doesn't suffocate the creature. A Tarrasque can be woken by outside means, through various tremors in the earth, changes in temperature, or being disturbed by other creatures. A roused Tarrasque wakens very easily, but it's quite unpredictable at this point, just as likely to confront a disturbance as it is to flee away at high speed to re-enter hibernation. So how does one kill a Tarrasque? The answer to that is, of course, not easily, but the specifics of how to do so can vary. In some cases it may be quite literally impossible, short of somehow managing to throw it into the sun. In other cases, perhaps just sheer power and determination from a group of exceptionally strong adventurers could fell the creature. In most cases though, a specific strategy must be employed in order to finally finish off a Tarrasque. In any of these cases, a tremendous battle will have to unfold, with the Tarrasque ignoring most of the attacks sent its way, and possibly reflecting some of the rest. Landing a blow is difficult enough without being stomped, shredded, slammed, or devoured, and one has to land quite a few blows before the battle is finished. Once the battle is over, one of three things will happen, as I mentioned. The Trask will either flee to the bowels of the earth to recover, the Trask will simply die like any other creature, or the Trask will become invulnerable for a time before regenerating. This regeneration would occur even if the Tarrasque was somehow disintegrated or slain with death magic. The only way to prevent this regeneration and permanently slay the Tarrasque, in these cases, is to use a powerful magical spell, either wish or miracle. In any case, the Tarrasque is clearly among the top of the overall food chain, so why haven't they clearly taken over the world and reduced it to little more than a barren wasteland? Well, the answer to that varies as well. In many cases, it's said that only a single Tarrasque is said to ever exist, although how and why that is is usually not said. Some say that the Tarrasque is a weapon of primordial entities placed on the world to destroy the works of the gods. Whether that's true or not, it seems that only one ever exists at once although other information such as reproduction or what happens if a Tarrasque is slain is unknown. Some legends say that the Tarrasque hails from a far off planet, host to several hundred of their species, but that would certainly be a nightmarish place if it is true. For the most part, people will only have to deal with one rampaging Tarrasque every few decades, but one is quite enough. I've talked about a handful of creatures in this series that are akin to animals, focused entirely on their own survival or that of their young. The Tarrasque is one of these, and yet miles apart at the same time. A monster closer to a force of nature than any other living, breathing animal, capable of untold destruction and savagery. This doesn't make it evil, of course, as it's only doing what it understands, but when one is roused, there is practically no greater threat to be found.